Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, if you are watching this on Facebook, go ahead and share it. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to um, talk to you today about what anointing looks like. This is going to tie into um, a previous video that I did called How to Spot Your 2020 Opportunities as well as um, a video that I did two days ago called Mantled. So um, keep that in mind as you're listening to this message. Um, hello, if you're joining me on Facebook, go ahead and share the message. Um, so we, we know that everybody wants to be set apart. We know that everybody wants to be anointed to carry out a certain um, uh, event or a certain um, progression or whatever. The call on their life, everybody wants to be able to step into that to the fullest. They want to be mantled. They want to be anointed to do that work. They want to um, be set apart and to take care of the the thing that they are appointed to do um, with their life. And we often think that anointing looks like Samuel coming to our house and calling us out in front of all of our family and saying like that's the one and the oil with our over our heads and um, that it's this amazing kind of um, celebration and it's a very clear and defining moment that this is what it looks like and this is what will happen when we are anointed for something but today I want to give you a little bit different perspective on what it means to be anointed and what it looks like when you are anointed. So um, I'm pulling this from John 9. Um, we all know this story. This is the story of uh, Jesus and his disciples walking and they say, who sinned? Did this guy sin or did his mom sin that he was born blind? And Jesus, of course, responds and says that n nobody sinned, you know, that this guy was born blind so that the glory of God might be uh, made manifest through this situation. And this is what, um, this is what it says here in verse six. It says that Jesus stooped down, he spit and made mud and anointed his eyes. Um, so the anointing wasn't in the form of oil. The anointing was in the form of spit and dirt mixed together and smeared on this guy's eyes. And this is what the Bible says was anointed. You, you know, what? this is how this man um you know, was not only given his miracle, but was ultimately set apart and uh, demonstrated greatness. The kingdom of God was made manifest through this, you know, anointing. So this was a very humbling experience. Imagine being this man, um, you know, you could hear that somebody was about, was spitting on the ground in front of you. Um, he was all of his life at the mercy of those who were around him. And now he was hearing the voice maybe even knew about Jesus he had heard people speaking about him but he never had the opportunity to see Jesus he didn't have that opportunity and yet um, the method that Jesus used to anoint him he wasn't offended by it he um, and we know that he wasn't offended by it because in verse 11 five verses later he tells people he anointed me he anointed me with the mud and he tells people that he got his miracle through Jesus making spit with the mud, making mud from his spit and putting it on his eyes. So the thing that I wanted to really share with you is that sometimes the anointing doesn't look like Samuel coming into our house, calling us out, putting the oil on our head and having this big ceremony. Sometimes it looks like uh, an unexpected situation, you know, you're, and, and maybe you're even frightened by the situation. If you remember the word that I gave um, or the video that I did a while ago, a few days ago called How to Spot Your 2020 Opportunities, and I said you need to look where your greatest challenges lie because a lot of people skip over those challenges. They skip over the, the things that are hardships to them and they just want to move forward. They just want to go into you know whatever is um, uh, on the other side of that, like the blessings and the easiness and the the smooth straight path and all of that kind of stuff and so they miss out on on their opportunity and this man could have done the same thing he could have skipped over you know jesus came he saw me he made me uh see he could have said that but he didn't he didn't skip over the way that he got his miracle he says jesus anointed my eyes he made mud and he put them on he put that mud on my eyes and that's how i got my miracle this is how i saw you know he 
this man could not see. He could not see. But his vision was the same as Jesus's. He saw from the kingdom's perspective. His vision in the spirit was very much aligned with kingdom. And we can tell that because he used the same language as, as the kingdom was using. The, the word says that in verse 6, this is how Jesus anointed the man's eyes. He anointed his eyes with that mud that he made from his spit. And the man has the same language as Jesus. He says, Jesus anointed my eyes. He made mud and he put it on my eyes and that's how I saw. And we can tell, um, like this man, there is a similar effect on the renewing of our mind. We can tell how uh, much we're in line with the kingdom, how much our mind has been renewed, how much we are hooked up with the system of thinking like Jesus by our words. So when our um, words, we can tell the effectiveness of, of how well we've been listening. The word says to not only take heed what you hear, but how you hear. And I have uh, a video on my YouTube channel called Be Careful Who You Listen To, which talks about this exact thing, not just how you hear, but, but um, the way that you hear and what you hear. So the closeness of Jesus should rub off on us, and we should be first able to, be, uh, to, to see that transformation in the way that we talk in our words how closely are we aligning with with the kingdom and this man not only just received his miracle you know he he later on says the the very famous line one thing that i know is that i was blind but now i see his miracle not only gave him a miracle but it was his elevation into the standing in society where people were listening to what he was saying they were listening to his testimony and it wasn't just because he was blind and now he could see. It was the way that he was made to see. That anointing was just as important. And so sometimes we, <clears throat> again, look past the process and we just want to get to the end and we want to see the promise come to fulfillment. And yet it's the, the process. This man had to sit and wait while he heard Jesus spit into the ground and while he had this mud smeared on his eyes and not to be offended by the method that the Lord was choosing to use to give him that promise, to give him um, um, a blessing. So likewise, we not have to not overlook the way that the Lord is choosing to bless us, even if it doesn't look like the way that we would have chosen. You know, he could have just said the word and had it uh, had this man been healed. And yet this this man's method of being anointed was much different than anybody else's. And so it was his, um, hello from Uganda. Wow. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, yeah, it's the method as well as the anointing. So we can't be offended by, because, you know, God didn't send Samuel to our house to anoint our head with oil. Maybe he's chosen to put us in a lower place but for the glory of God to be shown and demonstrated through our situation and that the the that doesn't mean that one is less anointed it they're both use using the same terminology and our words the way that we mirror the thing that kingdom is speaking over us will determine our um our effectiveness to be able to minister to be able to witness to other people about what God has done or is doing in our lives and again this man didn't skip over what he was um, what process had he had been taken through in order to receive his sight he was very honest by saying he's he stooped down he made mud he put it on my eyes he told me to go wash and now I see and that that um, your process speaks to people your process is is the witness that God is giving to you there isn't a, a two processes that are the same uh, last year no the year before I read I wrote um, a book called 37 miracles in which I talk about this and I ex I show like behind the miracles that Jesus did what how, how we can relate to God because this was his personality it's the personality of the father coming out in the works of Jesus and the way that he related to everybody and um, and so uh, when we can relate what we are going through to the personality of the father we need to know his ways we need to be in tune with his personality that's how we become transformed 
you know, and instead of just trying to make our own situation or our own lives, our own process look like somebody else's because that looks better or it sounds better, we're actually detracting from the authenticity of allowing other people to connect to God because maybe the thing that you're going through is is the thing that is going to lead other people to be able to connect to Jesus, to be able to connect to his heart because maybe they've only seen, they've only heard of Jesus doing a miracle or working in a certain way and that their situation is outside of that and so that there's no way that they could um, actually be connected to the perfect will of God but your testimony could change their mind. The words that you use to minister to other people about your process, about your anointing can be the thing that changes um, and shifts and turns people's hearts to connect to the Father. And so, um, yes, I just wanted to get on here very quickly and kind of tie these things together. In my um, word that I gave for 2020 called Mantled, you can find it here, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, I talk about how, you know, there was a man who went into the field and he found a treasure there. So he went and sold everything that he, he had so that he could buy that field. And there are certain places that you need to be in in order to receive the blessings from heaven. This has to do with the way that the systems in the spirit world work. There are um, certain doorways. There are certain places, um, physical locations that will lead you, that will usher you into your miracle. And it isn't the same place for everybody. You know, again, for example, this man was sitting on the road and people even said, wasn't he... I would always been out there begging. They knew his place. They knew where he had always sat and that there was no miracles happening in that place prior to this one happening. And so, um, but when you, when you cultivate um, that deep soil and that deep connection, there is something that must be released. It must be mirrored um, in, in the heavens. God must respond to those prayers. And if you haven't seen my word called Mantled for 2020, um, go check that one out because it's about um, making it mirror. And so when your words mirror the words of kingdom, that is how the fullness of the blessing comes. You see, this guy was already, he already saw by the time he was saying, he anointed me. He anointed my eyes with mud. He had already seen. So his miracle was already there. But the effectiveness of that miracle and the way that it connected to others only came when his words mirrored the words that the kingdom had chosen, had dedicated ahead of time to describing this situation. And so um, this is how we, again, tell true transformation has happened in us. It's not just about receiving the miracle. There has to be something in us that can sustain it because our miracles are never just for us. It's It should be not just... Um, uh, relatable to other people, but also transgenerational. We should be able to pass the, these, these things should so uh, strongly take root and rip out the things that are not of the kingdom in our lives, that these go from generation to generation. And again, we can tell the closeness, how close we've been to Jesus by the way that our words shift. And, and that is really the way to keep those promises anchored into, into our lives as a testimony. You know, these things create altars in our lives. And um, anyway, um, I just wanted to get on here and share this word with you guys and kind of tie um, some of my previous videos together. And I hope that this um, video also ministers to you as we're entering 2020. I hope you guys have had great, awesome days in the, the first um, two days that we've had of 2020. But um, yeah, I just, uh, I just really hope that this um, speaks to you, that you wouldn't be ashamed of the process that you are going through or that maybe you have gone through. Maybe you haven't shared the fullness of your testimony because of some of those hindrances where you're thinking a certain way. Allow the way that you think about your situation and your process to match uh, to match what the, what the way that the Father thinks about you, the way that He thinks about your situation, and see that He didn't leave out any detail. All of the details are super important. And who knows, by you sharing that one detail, by not being ashamed of that, or by being willing to share it with other people, and um, allowing what had previously brought you um, shame or despair or depression or whatever to be used in a different manner. We don't know what the fruit of, of embracing that would be. So 
Um, I really hope that this speaks to you. Maybe you will sit with God and just allow him to speak to you about some of your situations or maybe your mindsets um, and just ask him to come closer to you on those situations, on those topics and allow the way that he thinks to come so close to you that, that it becomes the way that you think about it as well. Um, again, this just isn't for you. It just isn't for you. It's for the people that you are going to bump into, the people that you're in um, covenant connection with, the, your generational um, lineage. All of this stuff is tied together, and it's very important that we steward everything that's in our hands. You know, and again, in that word, I talked about how, in how to spot your 2020 opportunities. I talked about how that woman. Um, in Second Kings, almost missed her opportunity because she said, "I don't have anything in my house," and she's and he's like, "Are you sure?" And, and she was like, "Oh, you know, I just have a little bit of oil, and that's it." But that little bit of oil turned into so much oil that she was able to pay off all of her debts. Right. So what we o overlook could be the thing that leads us not only to to our breakthrough, but like that woman sets her entire family free, right? It was generational. It wasn't just for that woman. She, she paid off her uh, husband who had died his debts and was able to save her sons. And so her blessing was transgenerational. And the same is true for us. And we need to be um, uh, mindful to not overlook the things that are in our hands, no matter how small, no matter how depressing or sad that thing um, looks to us right now, it can absolutely lead to not only... Um, um, our breakthrough, but the glory of God filling up the earth. So again, I hope this video blessed you, share it, and uh, next, uh, tomorrow I have a video coming out on my um, YouTube channel um, that you definitely want to watch. It is about being an information glutton. This is a word that the Lord has been speaking to me for a while about how people are very um, quick to learn or to absorb information and knowledge without thinking of about whether or not that should be, whether or not it's illegal knowledge and without taking the time to actually cultivate that knowledge into works, into transformation, whether that's in behavior or mindset, whatever. There's all of these ways that we need to make sure that what we absorb is, is truly getting past like the surface level. It has to have a transformation. So be on the lookout for that to be released um, tomorrow. And um, yeah, have a great day. Thanks for joining.